This video is brought to you by World War D. Set in a fictional war, progress through the stages one by one to defeat the boss. A classic style throwback to the arcade games of the 90s. A total of 20 classes of soldiers are ready. Deploy them according to the tactical situation. Every battle's outcome is decided by supply. If you need special goods, craft them yourself and resupply. A commander's training is difficult, and gear improvement isn't always easy. However, all the odds are shown. The game is perfect for a comfortable, easy, and fun pick-up-and-play kind of time. With its nostalgic side-scrolling defense, you can upgrade items and set your strategy with your army. So click that link down below to check out World War D today. Your army is waiting, Commander. When it comes to movies about cartoons, they usually fall into two different genres, theatrical and TV specials. Theatrical cartoon movies obviously have a bigger budget, and the art style will reflect that, having a higher quality to their visuals than what we're used to seeing with more grandiose plots. TV specials, however, are usually just extended episodes that you can label as a movie with the same art style. But I think it's time we add a third genre to cartoon movies. And that's... WHAT THE ACTUAL F*** IS THIS?! Seriously, what did we just see? Some cutscene in a foreign Spongebob game? I sure wish that was the case. No, what we have here is apparently a full-length foreign bootleg Spongebob movie! Spongebob in Tehran which according to a quick Google search, everyone knows is the capital of Iran. The more you know. There's not a lot of information out there regarding this weird 45-minute movie. From what I can gather, though, this is a weird Persian dub that actually aired on television in the Middle East, and you can actually buy on DVD. And this isn't even the first weird SpongeBob creation they've made. Holy fish paste, man! SpongeBob Vivo is crazy! So, uh... Anyway, I guess let's check out SpongeBob in Tehran. The movie starts with <laughs> Cursed everything. This narration, the people who made it, and this freaking Disney text. Like, bro, even I have the SpongeBob font downloaded onto my computer. The movie's opening scene is literally the opening shot of the first SpongeBob movie, so look out, Iran. Viacom is coming. آن موقع نهاره و همه ی احالی شهر دارن از خوردن همبرگرای خرچنگی خوشمزه و مقوی که خریدن لذت میدن Ooh, hey, it's Squidward! Bobby Spongy! Bobby Spongy? Is that SpongeBob's name in Persian? Because I am so down, you have no idea. <laughs> oh man, I don't know what's worse. The beta PS1 graphics or SpongeBob's voice? He sounds like Squidward! So Bobby Sponge cooks some patties. Patrick is sleeping under his rock in the middle of the road while his stomach talks to him. Seems like a pretty average, nightmare-induced episode of SpongeBob so far. Whoa, 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 what the heck? Mr. Krabs literally just threatened to pop a cap in SpongeBob's ass. And he showed no fear, saying, Mr. Krabs, I already have enough holes in me. Bobby Sponge fears nothing. Anyway, Mr. Krabs did this because SpongeBob told him the Krusty Krab is in danger. That danger being, they're out of special sauce. Which I swear was also a plot in a random episode of SpongeBob. Anyway, this is apparently a big deal because Mr. Krabs goes into his bat cave like secret lair to realize there's no sauce in storage and that customers are getting angry, demanding refunds. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this version of Mr. Krabs is so ruthless. He literally locks down the Krusty Krab and sucks up all the customers in a vacuum so they can't leave until they figure out this situation. What is this plot? 
So Mr. Krabs finds an old film reel on apparently how to make the secret sauce, because I guess he doesn't know how to do it. At least, I think that's what it's supposed to be, because the video starts off with this oil tanker running into a rock and breaking in half, while Spongebob and Patrick argue about the Titanic movie? What? <laughs> Turns out, however, there's no instructions here. What we do get, however, is a Mafia Mr. Krabs character who actually isn't Mr. Krabs, believe me, I'm, I'm trying to pay attention, and tells our heroes we need to find this guy who, in the real SpongeBob lore, just works at the Bargain Mart, and he will have all the answers they need. The only problem? He's in freaking Iran! So, our heroes pack up and head on their way! Gosh, I hate saying that I'm getting used to these visuals. While on the plane, SpongeBob reads a pamphlet saying, The Iranians are very friendly and has some of the oldest landscapes in the world. Okay, well now hold the phone! I refuse to learn anything in a movie that has Mr. Krabs pulling out a 22 revolver on SpongeBob. I'm sorry. So our heroes finally land in Tehran. I feel like this is offensive somehow, but if the movie was made there, I, I guess it's not. Now this is where the plot starts to mirror the first Spongebob movie, because Plankton heads to the Krusty Krab while nobody's there, and attempts to steal the formula. Oh man, actual animation, how I've missed you! Meanwhile, Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward are getting a taxi. Great, and this goes on for a long time. Like, like six minutes is dedicated to Bobby Sponge being in traffic and complaining! Like, is it supposed to be funny? It's just traffic! There's no jokes or anything, just complaining about how much traffic sucks! Which, yeah, is relatable for an adult like me. But for kids watching, I don't think they care! Spliced in between this epic traffic story, we have Plankton breaking into the Krusty Krab with a tank! Easy now! He manages to break in, but finds out he also needs this magical secret sauce. So he goes to Iran. How good is this sauce? According to this alternate universe, the secret formula is Iranian sauce. Now, I think, is a good time to mention how this movie is set up. It's basically split into four chapters. At the end of every chapter, we get the intro and narration again. So, it's more like four episodes split up and combined to make a movie. Right now, we're on episode three of four, and here's where things start to take a downfall. Yeah. It actually somehow manages to get worse. Because for the next 20 minutes, it's just Bobby Sponge, Patrick, and Squidward eating food. Seriously, this is like the biggest detour ever! They just walk into restaurants, eat, and create small talk. They try to advance the plot by showing the workers a picture of their target, but when they say, no, sorry, haven't seen them, they just continue to eat! I guess this is to educate us more on Iran, showing off their food after showing us their awful traffic. They go to get Kalepachi, a food I'm 100% sure I mispronounced. I'm sorry, I'm stupid. I googled a picture of it and it looked really scary. Granted, this is coming from a stupid American whose diet consists strictly of Taco Bell, so I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. I mean, I guess it's interesting if you want to learn about Iranian food. But if I wanted to do that, I wouldn't watch some cursed Spongebob movie! I'd watch Gordon Ramsay or something. So they go get some Korak Bandari. That's right, I'm gonna force you to learn as well. And the chapter ends, leading us to our finale. The police enters. Patrick, of all people, finds a detective to help them search for our Bargain Mart guy. Oh, me No, no! Bobby Sponge and Patrick's face sum this up perfectly! This is a creepypasta, you can't tell me otherwise. This weird cat creature with his bloodshot, never-blinking eyes? I hate it. I hate it so much! Now at this point, you think the plot would finally advance, right? They got a detective, they ate all the food in Tehran, something can finally happen now, right? No! 
Of course not! They goof around talking more about Iranian food and then go on a bus where this brand new character that we've known for maybe five minutes calls his family and we have to pretend like we care. So as it turns out, on the back of the photo that they were given, it was said that their target was going to a soccer game. Or football, if you live everywhere else in the world. This is so funny. So they go to the game and are having just a grand old time. Until... An RPG, a rocket propelled grenade hits the commentator. Bobby Sponge even asks if he died and the detective tells him, nah, this happens all the time. He's fine. And I kid you not, the next line of dialogue has the detective telling Bobby and Patrick that he found the guy they were looking for and that they can go home now. The entire dilemma and plot point of the movie resolved off screen. Mr. Krabs got a job selling merch because they needed a side plot that went nowhere and this is the first we've seen of it. And they say they're gonna miss Iran and head home. Oh yeah, Plankton's here. I forgot. He gets hit with a soccer ball. That's literally all he's done since he came to Tehran. And the movie ends just like that. They don't even show the gang heading back to Bikini Bottom. Although, I guess this is a fitting end to the movie, because what would happen next? They go to the Krusty Krab, make the sauce, and life goes on. Really goes to show you how thin and impactful the plot really was. So, yeah, that was SpongeBob in Tehran. Overall, I'd give it a strong... WHAT?! The movie was so weird and all over the place. The first 15 minutes had an actual plot, but then just devolved into Bobby Sponge giving us a tour of Iran with their food and awful traffic. The visuals were obviously cursed to all hell. This detective was incredibly pointless and was only there to haunt my dreams for years to come. SpongeBob in Tehran is an interesting piece of media, no matter how terrible or strange it was. But you want to know something? This apparently is part of a trilogy! Three SpongeBob in Iran movies! I didn't watch them all yet, but the preview option doesn't give me much hope they're gonna be any better. So buckle up, because I guess our adventures with Bobby Sponge and friends is just beginning. <laughs> So we all remember the train wreck movie that was Spongebob in Tehran. Heck, I'm not even 100% sure that that movie even happened. And instead like to believe it was all just a dream. But it was real. Now tell me, what's worse than one Spongebob in Tehran movie? Oh, I know. Two Spongebob in Tehran movies. No! Because there's a sequel. Spongebob in Tehran 2. Alien Friends. Don't ask me why this was made. I don't really think there was a demand for another bootleg Spongebob movie, but here we are! Now, reviewing this movie is going to be a little more difficult considering there's no subtitles. And since I don't speak Iranian, this just means we're gonna have to wing it! How could this go wrong? So the movie starts off at the Krusty Krab, where Spongebob is, I guess, offending the customers? Get out! It's kinda hard to tell, but yeah, that's what's going on, I guess. Immediately, the animation stands out. It's not good at all, but it is an upgrade from the PS2 cutscenes the last movie had. This one is at least trying to look like a cartoon. Mr. Krabs then calls, uh... I don't know. There's a woman, and he looks a little too excited, so... That happens. It's so hard to explain the plot, considering I have no clue what the characters are saying! Mr. Krabs then calls Spongebob into his office, I guess berating him for being mean to the customers, which goes against Spongebob's entire character to begin with. Mr. Krabs then turns on the TV, where we see... Donald Fishface Trump 
Is this canon? You, sir, are in Bikini Bottom. How does that make you feel? A lot of us are really smart. I'm really smart. Anyway, once again, Mr. Krabs sends SpongeBob and Patrick to Iran. Nice. So they go on a plane, Patrick flirts with the stewardess, they get kicked off the plane, wake up on a boat, where... Well... I hate this channel. Now, this cursed musical number just breaks out of nowhere. Now, there's a few things that irk me about this. Mainly, um, this. Is this... is this racist? I don't know, man. Something about this just seems really not cool. Oh well, at least they added in this really important scene. <laughs> what?! They were all stranded on a boat, in the ocean, despite living underwater. So I guess Spongebob and Patrick were just hallucinating that this guy was gonna eat them. So naturally, they befriend him. I don't know his name, so we're just gonna call him Chris. Chris has a knife. It never comes into play. Chris then invites our main characters to his house with this, uh, with, with stone butler, who's also evil. In this super awkward scene with no sound. Seriously, I thought the movie was broken or something, but no! This scene is just dead silent. So a major problem with the first movie, apart from everything, is that 80% of the runtime consists of Spongebob and Patrick and Squidward going around Iran and just eating food. The sequel, however, changes up that formula because now... Chris is here. That's it, they still eat food. Come on, man! Why is this a major plot point in the movies? Yes, those chicken nuggets do look delicious, but I don't need to spend 15 minutes plus another song to experience it! Luckily, however, the food scenes are much shorter. They make up for it, though, by having SpongeBob and Patrick watch TV while random citizens of Bikini Iran Bottom talk about how great it is there. And I just love some of these character designs. They're definitely unique and original. I'll give them that. But nothing, and I mean nothing, could have prepared me for what I was about to see next. No! No, 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 no! 125% this is not okay! I couldn't believe it! This bootleg movie added in a bootleg of a bootlegged character! So Spongebob and Patrick go to this restaurant which I guess is meant to be the Iranian Krusty Krab? Where then, Spongebob and Patrick get jobs here, because why not? The plot needed something. Spongebob works the register and naturally becomes a fry cook, needing to learn how to cook Iranian food. And there's also a side plot where Patrick falls in love with this random character. Again, it's something. And it's actually more in-depth than him just going Gah! at Mindy in the first movie. I guess this restaurant is struggling, so it's up to these two bootleg idiots to save the day. Not a bad plot point, honestly. There's at least something to work with apart from... Mmm, look at that chicken nugget. But hey, it's been about, uh, 10 minutes. I think we're due for another stupid song! <laughs> After that terrible time, we then focus on the Patrick storyline for a bit, with him falling in love. He watches a romantic TV show and thinks, hey, if I become good looking and handsome, maybe this random girl that he and the audience just met, she'll fall in love. Which leads us to the strangest montage of Patrick eating, working out, and taking... medicine? It's all just so terrible and goes on for way too long. All while this is happening, another terrible song is just destroying my eardrums! Then there's this guy. Who are you? Are you the villain? You kinda look evil, but I don't know, and at this point, I genuinely don't care. Because this next scene is just so... Yeah. 
I feel threatened right now. At this point, the rest of the movie for some reason just decides to focus on Patrick's love story. He shows up to the restaurant, asks the girl out, and surprisingly, she goes for it. And it's all pretty cute stuff if I'm being honest. They hold hands, go on some dates, eat food, Patrick gets her pregnant. EXCUSE YOU?! They literally just went out 45 seconds ago! This is quicker than Donkey and the Dragon hooking up! <laughs> oh my Neptune! There's little Patrick babies, and they're all hideous! You can't make this stuff up! Oh thank goodness, it was all just a dream. Patrick and her never went out, which is kinda sad now. Anyway, Bootleg Krabs takes Spongebob and Patrick to some mob family who's in charge of the restaurant and Iran or whatever. They talk about becoming mob bosses or something. Your guess is as good as mine. But wait! It turns out this girl is part of this important family. She meets Patrick and they head to a room where they can be alone. The two then share an awkward but cute moment while the girl removes her burqa, they then... Ugh, they bang. <laughs> they literally go to Pound Town in the next room while everyone shares the same expression I have right now. And the movie ends. Right there! I kid you not! The last thing this movie has before they roll credits is Patrick and this random character doing the dirty. What a fantastic movie. So how does SpongeBob and Tehran 2 measure up to the first title? Uh, they're equally just as bad, but I think I like the sequel better. SpongeBob and Tehran 1 looked like a PS1 game, so the initial shock and confusion of just what the heck you were looking at was pretty strong. Once that wore off, though, you just had a boring, slow-paced movie with 30 minutes of Iranian food lessons. The sequel at least kinda looks like a cartoon, and there's at least some kind of plot that's semi-interesting to follow. From what I can gather, SpongeBob and Patrick were banned from Bikini Bottom at the beginning of the movie, which is why they were crying, and now have to establish a new life in Iran. So I would definitely say this movie is an upgrade from the first one. But not by much, I'm not saying this movie is good at all, just better for a Spongebob and Tehran movie. But our pain isn't over yet. We've reached the finale, the third and hopefully last movie in this godforsaken trilogy. Spongebob in Tehran 3, Save the Sybil Gold. I hate it already. If you've come this far already in the series, we know what to expect, right? Awful animation, random cursed plot lines, and Iranian food. If you're playing SpongeBob and Tehran Bingo, those three things are pretty much guaranteed. Before we start, there's already things I need to complain about. First one being is that this movie, once again, doesn't have subtitles. So I'm left to my own devices in terms of figuring out just what the heck is constantly going on. And secondly, I'm so sick of these stupid movies. Okay, great, let's begin. <laughs> All right, cool new record. Literally one second into this movie, and we've already seen some cursed content. So the movie starts off with SpongeBob and Patrick. I don't. Please stop doing whatever that is. I mean, I gotta give them credit. At least this movie's trying to make them more bootleggy and different enough that they could be classified under parody. My immediate first impression of the art style is that it's definitely the best looking of the three movies. Again, those are some low standards, but you gotta admit, it does look good enough to be like a mad parody or something. Assimilated in yellow and porous is he! SpongeBob SquarePants! Anyway, Patrick and SpongeBob are sitting at home being depressed until they get a fateful phone call from the CG fish. No idea what the heck he's saying, of course, but I'm like 99.8% sure that he tells SpongeBob about a magical city of gold in space. Or Iran, why not? You have the wrong number! Why? Who is this? I don't know, and I stopped caring years ago. Yo, hold on a second, did you see that? SpongeBob's house? Who lives in an... 
orange under the sea? Bobby Spongy does. So, oh boy, Bobby and Patrick are so excited to find this hidden city of gold that was conveniently brought to their attention. But how are they gonna get there without a vehicle? Well, duh, you big dummy. They're just gonna head to the spacecraft store. You know, the spacecraft store. In there, there's all kinds of spaceships, but Bobby, Sponge, and Patrick don't care because they're too busy making fun of this guy for being short. Then they get kicked out. Jesus, how far are we into this movie? God dang it. They go to a dump. Coincidentally, this is where these movies came from. They run into the chocolate guy who doesn't even yell chocolate, which kind of upsets me. Anyway, they get a broken down ship and fix it up. Alright, nice. It took about 11 minutes for our stupid first song to break out. That's not too bad. <laughs> Did they even try? While we're on the topic of SpongeBob and Tehran tropes, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. Seriously. I mean, we've made it this far without any scenes involving Iranian food. Why do I talk? Bad things happen when I open my mouth, and oh boy, yeah! That JPEG looks very delicious. I gotta be honest with you all. This movie is so boring! All I can really talk about is the plot scene by scene, and the plot is the same as it always is! SpongeBob and Patrick fly around the world learning all about Iran. This time, they fly over other countries, like Africa and the Nevada desert. They eventually try to find the secret city of gold or whatever, but not without making new friends! Because what's a SpongeBob in Tehran movie without a cursed ally that we will never see again? First up, it's this horrifying CG bird that Patrick has a crush on. He even does the face. Yeah! Man, if there's one thing that all of these movies have in common, it's that Patrick is a ladies' man. He goes after every female character in these things. Anyway, on their way, they come across some Disney rats. I don't know what movie they're from, but they definitely look like Disney rats. It's so strange. They're animated really fluidly and have a ton of eccentricities in their facial and body reactions. Did the entire budget go to these Disney rats? All $15 of it? So, uh, we're about halfway through the movie and it's heavily relying on dialogue at this point. So much so, it's kind of getting impossible to figure out what's happening simply through the character's actions. But that won't stop me! That hot bird leads Bobby Sponge and Patrick to a pet shop, where that fish who called them earlier is being held hostage at! Although not really, I mean, it's just a pet store, and he is a fish, so... There's nothing really wrong here. This movie is so inconsistent with its quality, because sometimes, yes, this looks like a cursed bootleg Spongebob movie, but other times, like at this store, the animation style is just so... interesting. Like, is it bad? Is it good? I honestly can't put my finger on how I feel about it. So they save the fish, get captured by... this... Yeah, good old that. I've watched hours of these movies, it's gonna take a bit more to freak me out. They let him go. They end up in a desert. Talk to a scorpion. Scorpion does a fatality or something, I don't know. That's the problem with all of these movies. The plot exists for maybe 10 minutes until it goes away and Bobby Spongy decides to do something else. So, whatever. They find the city of gold out of nowhere. Save it from being torn down for construction, I guess. Was that the plot this whole time? I don't know. And all's well that ends well. We cut back to Bobby Spongy's house with the gang. Bobby, Cheeky, Octo, Gene, and Amoeba. My favorite. <laughs> Alright, roll credits. And that was Spongebob in Tehran 3, Save the Sybil Gold. It's about what I expected. The first time you watch a Spongebob in Tehran movie, you'll definitely have that shocked reaction. You're confused, in awe, and maybe even scared for what's happening. No matter which movie you watch first, that will be your reaction. But watching it again... And then again, its cursed charm definitely wears itself thin. 
The movies aren't engaging enough to keep your attention for an hour, let alone a trilogy of them. They're all totally unrelated from what I can tell. You can watch any movie you want in any order and still get the same amount of pain. The third one barely even mentioned Iran. It was more of an around the world kind of movie with brief mentions of Iran. And from what I can tell, this was indeed the last Spongebob in Tehran movie. Overall, yeah, it's cursed. Weird CGI, weird animations, awful music, overabundance of Iranian food, which I guess isn't too bad, and one ruined childhood. Great. But to be honest, after spending months watching and making videos about these movies, I kinda have a soft spot for Bobby Spongy. Okay, fine. SpongeBob in Tehran is the best trilogy of movies to ever exist. Because as it turns out, there is a fourth bootleg SpongeBob movie, simply titled SpongeBob in Chahabahar. I don't know where that is. Chahabahar. Chahabahar is a city and capital of Chahabar County, Sistan in Iran. Oh! That makes sense. Now this one really differentiates itself from the others simply by looking at the cover art. Because this might be the most cursed one of all. We have some girl. She seems nice. Along with SpongeBob, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs in what seem to be like costumes. Like like obvious costumes that you put on for Halloween. Now that's obviously really cursed looking, but they would never put that in the movie, right? They would have some standards, right? I don't know why I expect things. So let's just talk about SpongeBob and Shabahabahar, the fourth and hopefully last SpongeBob in Iran movie. So the movie starts off with some girl, probably the one from the title, walking around Iran, touching fish, talking to strangers. What, what does this have to do with SpongeBob? At least in the other SpongeBob in Iran movies, we are in Bikini Bottom. Why are we actually in this port in Tehran? Seriously, it's just this woman taking selfies, enjoying the Iran cityscape, which, you know, is fine. This may also be a good time to mention that this movie has no subtitles! Which means, once again, we're left up to our own devices to figure out just what the heck is going on here. So the lady is walking around and gets stalked by this guy who... is a villain? I kinda like him, he's very eccentric. Oh, oh, are we, go are we going to Bikini Bottom? I forgot this was a SpongeBob movie. So we're then just shown clips from episodes and the movie. Just dubbed over. Like you could just do that. Like that's not illegal or something. I'm not too sure what's happening, but it looks like they gave up using their own cursed animations. Their already terrible animation budget ran out. There's just no more animation. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, they're actually going through with this! I mean, I guess it's cheaper than animating. They must have found these costumes, like, in the dumpster. Where else would you find these? If not... <laughs> Now I kid you not, the next thing that Spongebob, Mr. Krabs, and Patrick do once arriving in the real world in their, you know, god-awful Halloween costumes, Spongebob pulls out a gun and robs this guy's car and steals it so they can drive off. What? I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't... <laughs> oh great, more of these people. They're my favorite Spongebob characters. Apart, apart from this guy though, he's actually, unironically, probably my favorite character in this whole movie. There's just so much talking in this movie about probably nothing. Now this next scene... I can only describe it as... Art. Colonel. He 
You seeing this shit? SpongeBob and friends are literally solid snaking their way in broad daylight, may I add, trying to sneak around this warehouse. They're in these bulbous costumes in their bright colors of yellow, pink, and red, trying to sneak around and not get caught. And you know what? You want to know the best part? They don't get caught. They they manage to make it inside. And then, uh... Hold them hostage? Tie them up and point guns at them? Steven Hillenberg would be so happy. What is this? Why is this happening? What? I wish it was in English. At this point, I need to know. I need to know what is happening. Why are SpongeBob and Patrick tying up these guys and holding them both hostage? Okay, so what I can gather, what I've tried to gather is that... Those two, the girl and the guy, are trying to sell tuna, right? And tuna is made of fish. So I am assuming SpongeBob and friends are not for that because they're basically, you know, eating their own people. I, 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 I guess it's something. It's a plot to bring them to the real world. <laughs> But no time for that, because we now need the Mafia to show up. Why? Uh, it's, it's, why not? Why not have Spongebob point his water gun at these people who, who I guarantee you are not actors. I guarantee you they were probably working on the docks for real at the beginning of the movie and they drag them along to do this. This is the single most ridiculous thing I have ever seen in my entire life. And all of this, everything I've been talking about, we're barely 20 minutes into the movie. You think I've been jumping around to get to the good stuff, no. Everything I've mentioned has happened sequentially in that order. What has happened so far? SpongeBob and friends have come out of the ocean, held these two people hostages who yeah, I don't even know if they're enemies or friends. This guy is too shady to be a good guy, but maybe that's the maybe that don't judge a book by its cover. That's what it's trying to tell you. But I kid you not, the rest of the movie is just SpongeBob and friends being shown around this tuna processing plant. Yeah, that's literally all it is. This is probably actually a real functioning plan. They probably had their friends say, Hey, you mind if I come in with the camera and just film you guys? We're making a movie. It's going to be the next big thing. It, it turns into like this educational video. Here's where they pack the tuna. Here's where the fish come in. The fish are checked. This is why I'm confused. Because in any other kind of movie... This business guy would show them the plant and be, look, look at this, isn't it wonderful? We respect our workers. We don't make them work 80 hours a week like Amazon. They don't have to pee in bottles. <coughs> this would be a plot point to trick our heroes into thinking everything is okay while secretly doing something evil. But here? No! No, they're just showing them around the tuna processing plant, and they're just okay with it. Yeah, SpongeBob and Patrick and Mr. Krabs, they're seeing their fish brethren be like sold and processed and eaten, and they're just totally fine with it. The movie just becomes so boring. It was bad before, but at least it was interesting, even if just a spectacle of SpongeBob doing what he was doing. Now it's literally like an ad for some probably real tuna place in Iran. And that's it. The guy and the girl, I guess, are friends and he was never really evil, apart from, you know, looking like an evil 50s villain. SpongeBob and Patrick and Mr. Krabs leave. Roll credits. <laughs> This is such a strange movie. At least in the other SpongeBob and Tehran movies, there was a plot to an extent where something would happen. Something would eventually lead up to something. But here, there's plot for the first 20 minutes, and then it just falls off a cliff. I don't know anybody who wants to watch 15 straight minutes of a factory tuna factory tour. So, how is the movie? you really want me to answer that? But if we're gonna grade it as a Spongebob in Tehran movie, it's still terrible, 
but there is a nice level of curse charm to it. This visual, this entire visual, once the Spongebob and friends come out of Bikini Bottom, the visual of them walking around and doing anything, he's just gonna make you be confused. So that was Spongebob and Chab... Ch Chabahar. Chabahar. Now it's time for so long. But we'll sing just one more song. Thanks for doing your part. You sure are smart. You know, with me and you. And my dog Blue, we can do anything that we wanna do. Bye. Thanks for watching. Try the tuna. Go to Tehran. Go to Iran. Go to everywhere in the Middle East. Eat fish. That's what they want. We've already talked about the Spongebob in Tehran movies and how terrible they were, but they actually have a remade official Spongebob episodes. That sounds weird, but let me explain and you'll slowly start to understand. Chocolate! 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 So just like with any TV show that leaves America, they have to be redubbed so people can understand what they're saying, such as the beloved and cute sounding German dub of SpongeBob, and the Chinese dub. Ah, what a wonderful Sunday morning in our glorious people's republic. Okay, that one's not official, but you get what I'm trying to say. So when SpongeBob makes its way to Afghanistan and Iran and whatever the other place was. So normally when you take a cartoon or TV show, you just redub the voices, that way the people can understand it. But the Persians like to go one step beyond. See if you can notice it. <laughs> Did you catch that? Because if you didn't, that's a little understandable. Pretty much, they put Sandy in a dress, because normally, the scene has her in her bra and underwear, which... You know, now that I think about it, that's a little questionable. Now listen, I'm not Persian, so I'm not gonna speak on behalf of them, but I'm gonna assume, over there, the women, they need to be covered up. You know, because I, 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 I society. society. And honestly, if you showed this to someone who watched SpongeBob as a kid and hasn't seen it since, it might not look too obvious. But the fact that she doesn't even have the outline around the dress is what really makes it look heavily edited. I mean, it's a pretty good job of covering her up, but it, 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 it doesn't need to. It's squirrel boobs. It doesn't need to be censored. فقط یه چیز رو میدونیم. اونم اینه که اطراف خودمون رو با چیزای جدید پر کنیم تا شاید از یکیشون خوشمون بیاد و خوشحال بشیم و به غیر از اینم هیچ Ooh, and I love SpongeBob's voice because it's the same guy or at least it sounds like the same voice actor from the SpongeBob in Tehran movies. Oh, I love that. Now, just like with any cartoon, we have to listen to the intro theme song and see how it sounds in a different language. Oh! <laughs> Now, people have told me from my previous Spongebob and Tehran videos that it's pronounced Bob is spongy, right? Bob is spongy! That's what it's supposed to basically translate to in English. However, when I've been saying it, I keep calling him Bobby Spongy, which I like a lot more, and I'm gonna keep doing. <laughs> It sounds like a bunch of little kids in their bedrooms just dubbing it over with no experience. It's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> However, the edits don't stop there, such as the Jellyfish Jam song. You remember that bop, right? Well, for the Persian people, that's not good enough. So here's what they replaced it with. Okay, you know, maybe not as catchy, but to each their own, I guess. Also, something I just noticed that's kind of funny. I guess in Iran, they play SpongeBob on the Disney Channel, their Disney equivalent. Oh, so Iran could put SpongeBob on Disney Channel, but I put SpongeBob on my channel, and now it's a problem. Now listen, I'm not here to make fun of other countries and how their voiceovers sound, but at the same time, I kinda am. Ah, 
And then there's this video. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a commercial bumper. I don't know if it's the official SpongeBob theme song. I don't know what it is, but it exists. You watch it and try and tell me. Alright, welcome back. You come to any conclusions? No? Good. Me neither. Alright, coming back to Sandy Cheeks, if they don't want to go through the effort of animating an entire dress around her, which I get can be difficult, they'll instead just do this. They zoom in like crazy on it so you can't see her bikini. That's one way to get through it, I guess. Alright, now for some fun random pieces of trivia because I ain't got much else to talk about apart from the funny voices. Did you know that despite not being able to show Sandy in a bikini, they show the red mist of Squidward's sewer slide. They, they kept that in there. That's fine, but not squirrel boobs. And actually, most dubs are illegally made without Nickelodeon or Viacom's permission. So basically, these people took the episodes, dubbed it over anyway, and aired it on TV without Nickelodeon's permission. They don't care. The stones of these people, I gotta admit. Uh, what other pieces of trivia can I find on here? Ah, yes! All right, where does SpongeBob live, right? He lives in Bikini Bottom. However, the Persian dub of SpongeBob changed that because bikinis are bad. I'm not kidding. And that's the weird Persian dub of SpongeBob that for some reason exists, and for some reason we are allowing to exist. I hope you learned something new, or at least found it interesting, or I don't know. If you like this video, please give it a like, share it around, comment, let me know why I'm wrong and stupid. I got plenty of time to read these comments. Bye bye. <laughs>